Welcome back to Pathologic. It's about 1 in the morning on day 11. We just watched the play, which suggested that there's something I can do to save the polyhedron, but that it would involve some sort of a sacrifice, the casualties, or something like that. So I think I'm going to have to do something about that today. Or if not today, then certainly tomorrow, which is the last day. Regardless, I don't have any letters for this day, I don't have any quests for this day, so I guess the main thing to do is just walk around and talk to everybody and see if I can figure out exactly what I'm supposed to be doing for today. See if we can get a head start on it before letters come in. However, before that, it turns out that I actually got a letter at the very end of day 10 that I missed. So in a way, it's sort of a letter for day 11. It, it technically doesn't go under the category of day 11, but it's basically a letter meant for Day 11. The Evening Letter from the Inquisitor, Day 10. Just to remind you, any news from Barak yet? Any luck proving the mineral origins of the bacterium? Last time we spoke, Barak did his best to assure me that the abattoir is clean of infection. Tomorrow he is supposed to present me with evidence of that. As of now, I have no reason to suspect him of being short-sighted, let alone dishonest. If I understand him right... The character of the local soil renders geodesic reports unnecessary. Both the earth and the water here appear to be pure. But what caused the outbreak in this case? I'd rather not recur to the carrier hypothesis. After all, we only have one day left. Hmm. So she's asking me, any news from Barak yet? So I'm thinking maybe something I should do is go speak with Barak, who I'm assuming is still at the Termitary. But that's really far away for now, so let's focus on closer things for the moment. Let's go speak with little Vlad. If nothing else, I want the updated infection map for this day. Oh. Go, go, go! Oh. Is someone chasing me? Oh! Oh, where did you come from? <clears throat> Those things are tricky. I swear they wait until you're looking the other direction and then they come up behind you. Oh my god. Fuck my life, I just got hit twice. Oh, how are our stats looking? Infection higher. Immunity garbage. I, I, oh, and now there's a you. <clears throat> Not gonna waste the ammo. This is a terrible start to the day. Oh my god. <sighs> okay. I believe I'm out of immunity boosting stuff. Yes, I'm out of immunity boosting stuff. So my immunity is now in the garbage. What? Have you seen my father lately? Uh... You are aware he's dead, right? No, I haven't. I can't tell him that he's dead? Oh my god. There's this thing that... Alright. Give me the map, please. Oh boy, that's a lot of infection. That is a lot of infection. Also, something I need to keep in mind is that getting a panacea is extremely important. Because, at the least, there's, um... What's his name? Chieftain Notkin? Yeah, Chieftain Notkin. At the very least, he's sick and needs to be cured. And given that it's a new day, there's probably at least one more person who's now sick. Of course, the only place I know of to get... 
Like, um, I can cure them with Schmouter, but I think the only place you can get Schmouter from is from the kids, and the kids can only exist in these white parts, of which there's very few, so the chance of finding Schmouter is very low. It's much more likely that I'll get it from a quest. Ah, <sighs> okay. You know what? Maybe I should go to Bad Grief and see if he has any panacea. Like black market panacea or something. I doubt it, though. Speaking with the canes seems like a smart thing to do. Yeah. Let's go speak with the canes. Let's see if they're even still alive. Whoa! What? Um... I'm gonna hope that there was like a rat behind me or something that they were trying to burn. Let's try that again? Were you actually shooting at me? Whoa! Wh huh? I don't understand. Why would the fire people shoot at me, but not these people? What's your problem, dude? Wait, now I'm not a threat? Huh? Wait a minute. They... They just burned out the infection from me? These are some very magical flamethrower dudes. So apparently they kind of like magically sensed that I was fairly infected. Which is why they attacked me, but more than that, they burned out literally every trace of the infection. There's no infection left. At all. Huh. Interesting. Well, normally I would reload, but with the infection gone, even though my health is crap, I actually think that might be worth it, because I can always just use my bandages. Yeah. I'll take, like, 60% health and zero infection. Sure. Thank you? I'm not sure if I should be thanking them. I had no idea that the flamethrower dudes did that. No idea. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I only have one Meridorm, though. I really can't spare it. Oh god. Go between them? Oh. You know what? Um, I actually want to see if I can buy some immunity boosting meds here. got quite a bit of money. It's worth it, I think. Yeah, I'll take all of those. Okay. About 80% immunity. Victor's still alive, at least. The commander will hesitate no longer. He'll act while he's still in control. Maria is getting ready to become a mistress. Do you know about mistresses, Bachelor Denkovsky? Um, I think I remember what a mistress is. It's sort of like um, a, a seer, someone who can see the future. I think. Uh, just to refresh my memory and yours, though, let's say no, tell me. Mistress grants life to anything she touches with her hand, her words, or even her thoughts. 
like that ancient king who turned bread, trees, and water into gold with a touch of his hand. But the king's touch turned the living into the dead. A mistress does the opposite. How does it work? That I do not know. I know that it happens, and know that there is no greater joy in the world. A mistress can hold a toy in her hands, and it will come to life. She can think about it, and the doll will remember its family history to the seventh generation. She can see it in a dream, and the doll will be able to create. And Maria's becoming one of such women? We're not sure if we ought to be happy or sad. The joy could not be greater if she were to become a mother. For today a wondrous creature will be born. But the sorrow is also great. Maria is leaving. We used to have a beloved daughter. And today we're going to lose her. You've written that the coming of a mistress will stop the pestilence. Why? It won't stop it. It will herald it. You will be the one to stop the pestilence, Bachelor Dankovsky. Your path and Maria's run parallel for now. And close to each other, too. One thing I know for sure. When a mistress comes, the filth will be gone from our lives. They're incompatible. Hmm. So the fact that Maria is becoming a mistress is is not itself going to stop it. It's just that at the same time that she's becoming a mistress, something else is going to happen, something else that I'm going to do, that's going to stop the plague. I want to see Maria. It's too late now. Maria is unconscious. Her latest fit came last night. She came too for a brief while, and then fell back into the depths. She will wake up soon, and I believe my daughter will be able to rise from the depths to which she descended. Why did she summon me? I'm, I'm assuming this is referring to a letter that I haven't actually received yet. Why did she summon me? My daughter had two final wishes, to talk to her mother and to visit the other two chrysales. She can do neither now. I don't think she will ever talk to her mother again. But she must see the future mistresses. They must acknowledge her. Who are these future mistresses? There used to be three powers in our town. They may not exist anymore, but they have left offshoots. Two more heiresses will become mistresses when their time comes. One is Capella, Victoria's daughter. I don't know who the other one is. It may be Sabarova's successor, but it's not Clara. Clara is pure. The Sabarovs had no other successor. Why are you so sure it isn't Clara? Also, I think it just said Sabarov. I keep... <laughs> I will never stop messing up their name. Sabarovs. Sabarovs. Sabarova. Sabarovs. Okay. Don't worry, I'll mess it up next time I say it. Because Clara was here a while ago, she looked me in the eye, and I can tell good from evil, all right. No, she is not the mistress of Earth. She may very well be a true saint, but I can feel where the real mistress of the Earth is now. She's hiding somewhere in the termitary. Hmm. I was already thinking I should perhaps go speak with Barack at the termitary to see if he has any news, but that makes me want to go there even more now. So the future mistresses, which implies that they're probably young, so... Hiding in the termitary. You must be talking about, um... What is her name, Taya? Is she actually in the termitary, though, or is she in the abattoir? Uh, no, yeah, she's in the termitary. Yeah, she's in the termitary. Then he is probably speaking about... Taya. The young girl that kind of runs the place. All the butchers listen to her. Alright, so there's something you want to tell me. Uh, want me to tell them? Someone needs to take the symbols of succession from these chrysales. They know what this is about because they can also feel this awakening. 
It is very much possible that Capella knows who has inherited the title of Katarina, the usurping mistress of the Earth. She was, after all, the leader of one of the powers while we were dead. But why are you asking me? Maria did. She specifically pointed out that she didn't want a stranger's hand to touch the rings that will forever adorn her body. This changes things. Alright, we have our first quest. Is it a main quest, or...? No, it's a side quest. These canes are a strange lot. The decline of the family is apparent. You can almost see the enormous cloud of foreboding that sprawls over the roof of the crucible. Still, they seem to rejoice in understanding that their imminent death is nothing compared to the bliss that the birth of a new mistress will bring. The victor says that the attributes of her power should be collected from Capella. And from the changeling? So, what will happen if I go try to speak to Maria? I'm guessing the door is just going to be locked. Oh my. Above the statues of the mistresses, the air is heavy, as though a thunderstorm was upon us. I could swear I've seen a shade of Scarlet Nina's silhouette and stature rush towards the crypt's gate. She was moving fast, but was in no hurry, as though she walked without touching the ground with her feet. What, what are the statues of the mistresses? I think I might know what he's talking about, actually. Isn't there a spot near here that has, like, a big statue? And a sort of weird crypt thing. Um, hold on, I think I'll go there soon. <laughs> this this line is so dismissive. You were simply focusing your sight on a single point for too long, mate. You should not forget to look around. The lady is not to be found anywhere. What could have happened? She couldn't reach focus yet. It's too early for that. And we would have known of the mistress's coming immediately. That's why we were assigned here in the first place. <laughs> that means you're guarding your lady poorly. Incompetent fools. They all say the same thing? Yep. And of course it's locked. Okay, so I'm thinking what they're talking about, the statues. I think there's like a statue over here. I think this is the area that had some food at an altar at the beginning of the game and I never took it because it felt like I was disrespecting the... The, like, the site of worship. So I think I want to go there. Perhaps Maria's there. What, what are you doing? <laughs> the person really has to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Damn, I shouldn't have eaten that. Let's see if Georgie has anything to say. In growing old, we become more foolish. Nope. Still just sitting around collecting Simon's memory particles. Alright, I want to speak to the Inquisitor and then go to the statue place. There is an eternal order that fate itself has predetermined. It is due to this order that things happen the way they should following a preordained path. I have studied the blueprints of this specular edifice. It's a very suspicious building, let me tell you. It's actually not a building at all. It's a machine. The only thing I cannot understand is how it is mounted. Its nature disallows it from being fixed in place. It works like a gyro. Indeed, a very spot-on description. What do you think about it?
Hmm. Wow, I can tell her I think it's where the pest is spreading from. Which I'm guessing would just doom it to destruction. Hmm. I don't think any of these fully capture my thoughts. I do think it's brilliant, I think it's amazing, I think it's bizarre, but I also think it's unsettling. Because I don't understand it. Because it's seemingly impossible to understand. It seems like it's beyond any sort of earthly understanding. And because of that, it makes me uncomfortable. But let's go with what I think The Bachelor would say. The Bachelor is someone who can appreciate brilliance. Someone who can appreciate intellectualism, if that's even a word. I appreciate it. It's a brilliant monument to the aspiration of the human mind. I feel that the cause of the epidemic has something to do with it. I don't like the fact that solid ground supports a construction like this, despite the law of gravity. I want to know how they managed to mount it. By answering that question, we will find out where the plague came from. Hmm. Why is she why is she so sure? Like how does she draw this connection between if we find out why this impossible structure is able to stay upright, we'll know where the plate came from. Like how how does she know those are connected at all? Are you sure? I have no doubt the polyhedron has nothing to do with the epidemic. It's a masterpiece. So what? It is indeed a masterpiece. It is entirely possible that humankind won't ever create anything to rival it. It's more than a masterpiece. It's a revolution. This construction is no less a breakthrough than Starflight. I believe they're incompatible, this edifice and the plague. The polyhedron has been reliably protecting everyone who tried to hide inside from the epidemic. Trust my guts, Bachelor. I want to know the truth. So do I, believe me. I'm not positive it has caused the epidemic. It's just my presumption. But you cannot deny that disregarding this presumption would be an act of criminal negligence. Fine. I'll try to find the mind behind the blueprints. The mind behind the blueprints? What do you mean? The mind behind the blueprints is Peter Stamaton, no? Eh, and that's the main quest. How in the world is this building supported when the very nature of it is insupportable? Perhaps the staircase itself is a form of reciprocal frame on which the whole thing rests. Perhaps it is the complete opposite. The base of the building is not a structural support, but instead an anchor to hold this floating structure to the earth in the way of a stepladder thrown from a... dirigible? I think that's how you pronounce that. Dirigible? Something like that. Hmm. It's not support, it's an anchor. <laughs> it's trying to float up. Could be, but I mean, <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this? There's absolutely nothing solid to go on here. This, all of this basically boils down to, I have no idea what the hell this is. My only hint is to find the mind behind the blueprints, which I thought I already did, Peter Stamaton, although even he himself said he wasn't sure how it works, so... Seems like there is no mind behind the blueprints, exactly. Partially from Peter Stamaton, partially from... I don't know, some divine inspiration or something. So yeah, I have no idea what to do with that, but uh, let's just do the side quests for now, I guess, and see if something pops up. I wonder if I should go speak with the children. Actually, I don't think I can go inside anymore. Last time I left, I think the children had disappeared from being near the entrance up at the top. Which means you can't go back inside. Unless they've reappeared, but I doubt it. Let's go to the statue. Yeah, 
I think there's a statue over here. Yes. Definitely see a statue in the distance. Yeah, so is that the statues of the mistresses? Whoa! Oh my god, you little brat. And there's the bread and milk still there. Okay, well, Maria isn't there, but there is another statue over here. Nothing. Don't suppose you've seen anything, officer? Can't talk to him. Well, that was fruitless. Okay, so where do I need to go? Definitely to the termitary. Zero doubt about that. Find Barack and I think speak to Taya as well. Along the way, let's just talk to some people along the way. Talk to Lara. Talk to Yulia. See how they're doing. Bandage, yes! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Not that I desperately need it right now, but it's just good to actually be able to trade for something. For once. Hmm. What's the word on the street? Is no one preparing for the evacuation? It is the truth they say about the world transforming. Yes, sir. It will transform. Surrendering our mortal coils devoured by the soil to build a brave new world all shimmering and gleaming, and will become the ground from which the joy will grow and bloom, and fume its odors sweet. You okay? <laughs> oh my god, this line is so cold. Nothing but burdocks will grow from you. This is scientifically proven. Now hold on, what's the other option do? Hopefully you will live to see it. Don't be too fast to bury yourself. No, we shall perish soon. We ragged freaks had it coming. There is no place for us in the new worlds. We're obsolete. <laughs> There's, yes, this is true. It's like, oh yeah, you know, that makes sense. A mentality like this definitely spells doom. So he's just given up hope, completely and utterly. Let's see if we can scrounge up some food. Ah, <gasps> beautiful. Dried fish, sure. Dried meat, whoa, that's really cheap, 480. Fresh stuff, nah. Hunger's at about 20-25%. Alright, let's go meet Lara. Yes. Nothing. Hmm. In that case, let's go speak with Yulia. Perhaps I should speak with 
block. Yes, let's do that. There must be something to say to him. Clara? What is Clara doing here? What is there to talk about? My arms now? are stiff. You are not the only healer here. So? We wait for tomorrow. That's it. Huh. What about you? It's so cold. And now I want you to forget everything that you have ever been told about me. Trust me. Look me in the eye. Or look down. Or else you may think that I'm trying to mesmerize you and impose my line of thinking upon you. Aglaya is a traitor. She is the main foe on your victory road. Okay. I can say that Aglaya is my best friend. Try to stand up for her, or don't. I'm trying to remember exactly what Aglaya has done to wrong me. Has she done anything to wrong me, or do I just distrust her in general? I really don't trust her. No one had any illusions on this account. She's telling lies. I've just found out that she doesn't want to find the source and defeat the disease at all. She's not counting on victory. She's not trying to find a way to preserve the town in its true form. Her inquisitorial mission is just a smokescreen, a performance. What does she want, then? Only one thing. To destroy the children's tower. Before she dies. As her final word. And she has chosen you to become her tool. Do you know that these tools are called rams? Before she dies, she is doomed, sentenced to death. Her commission here was her last chance. She had to find a way to save the infected. But her job was done by the Ripper, Artemy Barak. Yesterday she received a letter. The powers that be do not acknowledge that she has fulfilled her mission. She will be executed as soon as she gets back. Okay, so she's saying that her job was originally to save the infected? But because her job was instead done by Artemy Barak who developed the vaccine, the panacea. Because of that? Because she's not the one that actually did it? The powers that be do not acknowledge that she's fulfilled her mission. Because she didn't save them, I guess? So they're going to kill her? I wouldn't really say that people have been saved, though, right? I mean, sure, he's developed a panacea that works, but... People are still dying in the hundreds every single day, because... Why is it that they're dying even though we've developed a panacea? It's because we can't make enough of it, right? I think? I'm a little bit unclear on that. But I, I think that's it. Okay, why would she target the polyhedron, then? She's doomed anyway because of hatred. Aglaia sees the polyhedron as Nina Kana's infernal gift. She thinks that Nina rose high, but her pride drew down the wrath of heavens. Aglaia believes that her duty is to destroy this challenge before it has led to more evil. Or maybe she doesn't even believe that. I love this music so much. I love it. Polyhedron. She sees the polyhedron as Nina Kana's infernal gift. 
gift. Who is Nina Kena? Was that the last mistress? I'm going to assume so. So she thinks that Nina was, what, full of herself and tried to rise too high and defy nature too much and that the thing that she made is what drew down the wrath of the heavens and created the plague. So she sees the tower, the polyhedron is some sort of... Hmm... Like an infection, almost? A symbol of hubris? That led to the plague? Why did you call me a ram, then? You were implying I'm a sheep, weren't you? Why does she need me here? It's all very simple. The army came. The Inquisitor, halfway to the scaffold already, has no power over the cannons. So she made you convince the commander. For General Ashes does not believe her one bit. But you will offer him a false report with a clear heart and point in the wrong direction. So she wants me to feed General Ash misinformation. I need proof. If the people I've asked you about are alive by tomorrow, tomorrow you'll have proof. Oh god. Oh god, please tell me the people that she's asked me about are actually alive. Also, oh my god, look at her face. She's like... Her face scares me. So the only way I'll have proof is if those people are alive on that list of names. Where she said she's gonna perform a miracle on the last day or something like that. I need to look at that list and make sure everybody's alive. Amen to that. <laughs> Sounds weird. So, what is there to talk about now? Whoa, there's a lot more to talk about, apparently. Uh, all of you are obsessed with murder and destruction. Why doesn't it occur to any of you that you can heal without cutting the sick parts off? By the way, two days ago I received a letter, a little letter from you. What was it supposed to mean? Take it at face value, Bachelor. Nothing has to be broken, believe me. This town is alive. As for you and Haruspex, you are demons, deceived and ruthless. Your eyes are white, for you are blind. Your tongues are red, for you thirst for blood. Your cells are invincible, for you are hollow. One of you wants to decapitate it, another to slice away its body. And you? And I will keep everything. Both of you are destined to fail. Both of you will ruin that which can live united. United tragically, but united still. Let them argue, let them deny one another. But that is exactly how it grows. The town is inconceivable without the tower. The tower is impossible without the town. How are you going to keep it all? It's impossible. True. It can only happen miraculously. You can't do that. Just trust me. That will be your miracle. Although Barak doesn't need that anymore. He has paid for his thickness in spades. It's impossible, and she said it's true, it can only happen miraculously. And didn't she say if all those people are kept alive at the end that a miracle will happen? So that will be the miracle, I guess? I can do that. You'll see. Alright, hold on. I'm going to take a look at that letter that she sent. Okay, this is the letter that Clara sent me a couple days ago. The Changeling's Choice. And here's the list of people that need to be alive for her miracle to happen. Bad Grief the Thief. 
Okay, we know he's alive and I've already given him a panacea. He's fine. Foreman the villain. I don't know who that is. That's the really confusing one. I don't know who Foreman the villain is. Um, when I think of Foreman the villain, I think of Big Flad, who is unfortunately dead. But when I think of Foreman, I also think of Taya? But I don't think of her as a villain, but wasn't she described as a Foreman? Could it be Little Vlad? Was Little Vlad a Foreman? I'm really not sure. So that's the one I'm super worried about. Because if it's Big Vlad, then I'm screwed. Because Big Vlad is dead. Alexander the Cruel. Okay, that's Alexander Block. He's alive, he's fine. Katarina the Deceived. She's alive, she's fine, as far as I know. Laura the Vengeful. She's fine. Yulia the Unbeliever. She's fine. Anna the Egotist. She's fine. Aspidy the Heathen, she's also fine, and Reuben the Oathbreaker, who's also fine. So as far as I know, at least the last time I saw them, these people are all fine except for Foreman the Villain because I don't know who that is. Actually, you know what? I know that Chief Notkin is sick, but I seriously don't think that he's Foreman the Villain. And he doesn't seem to be on the list, so does that mean I can let him die and it doesn't matter? I've gotta admit, if I find Panacea, it's gonna go to someone on the list more than it would go to someone who's not. Uh, but anyway, that's thinking too far ahead. Let's hope we don't have to make that decision. But yeah, I want to be super, super careful that I visit every single person on the list and make sure that they're not currently sick, you know, make sure they haven't gotten newly sick. So who have I checked on that I know is not sick? Well, I know Bad Grief isn't going to get re-sick. I already cured him. I know Alexander's fine because I'm here. I just spoke with Lara, so I know she's fine. Um, I also just went to Vlad, and he's fine. So if Vlad is forming the villain, then he's good. But I do need to go speak with Yulia. I'm feverish. Did you say you're feverish? You're not sick, are you? And let's see what else there is to say with her. Yes? I've come to you on behalf of Maria Kena. Uh, do I want to go down that path? Let's see where that goes. I've come to you on behalf of Maria Kena, Clara. Why should I care for your Maria Kena? Yesterday I might have been afraid of her. But now I'm beginning to feel my own power. Also, I'm not the mistress of the earth. She is mistaken. Why have the Canes told that you are not the third mistress? What? They did. Which one? Victor or Georgie? This is very important. Victor. Ha! <laughs> then it's all bosh. Be on your way, bachelor. I shall speak to Maria myself. If she wants me to, that is. Hmm. So she doesn't trust anything that Victor says, doesn't care about it. But if it came from Georgie, then she would. Is that because she trusts Simon and Georgie is now kind of a vessel for Simon? As you wish, but don't expect me to help you. Today or tomorrow, farewell. What? I'm trying to help her. That's a weird thing to say. Are you sure you're in good health? Alright, that's the end of that. Yeah, let's go speak with Yulia, make sure she's okay. Also, I really need Panacea. Like, I where the hell am I gonna get Panacea? <sighs> it kinda makes me wish that I took the gun from Anna and actually gave it to Lara, because that would have given me another Panacea. But then if I did that, chances are Lara would have ended up dead. And she's also on the list of people that needs to be protected, so... It's probably, in the end, a good thing that I didn't do that. Probably. Unless I could have given her the gun, gotten the panaceas from Anna and from Lara, and also somehow stopped it. Like, could I have given her the gun and then talked her out of it or something? I don't know. It's too late for that now. 
I keep forgetting the most basic things these days. Alright, she's fine. Another one checked off the list. So as far as I know, no one on the list is actually currently sick. So perhaps I don't actually need Panacea. I still want it though. Who else should I visit who's on the list? Um, I haven't been to Rubens today. Hmm. I should also go check in with Anna and Katerina. They're also on the list. So where should I go to next? I actually think I want to go to Ruben next, because I kind of want to stop by Bad Grief's Lair and see if he happens to sell a panacea, like a black market panacea or something. I'm going to do that, but I'm going to cut out the walk there because it's pretty long. I'll be right back. Oh no. It's Big Vlad's daughter is sick too? <sighs> Even being one of the bound, they're just an ordinary person. Okay. Um, they're not on the list though, are they? I don't think they are, but still, I want to cure them. Okay, so, right now there's two people that I know are sick. But I also don't believe either of them are on the list. But Capella is supposed to be one of the future mistresses. I feel like I should try to cure her. For that reason alone, if nothing else. Hmm. I'm just gonna assume I have to cure everybody. So let's just assume I need two panaceas at the moment. Alright, so I spoke with Ruben, he's doing fine, um, nothing to talk about with him, and no one outside of his door, so he's not sick. And now I'm here with bad grief. See? I'm resigning. No more trade tomorrow. Ship oars. Should I drop my will, perhaps, eh? What do you think? You've got them paper smarts, professor, so tell me. How should I dispose of my property? If you offer me no advice, I'll have it all buried. Still better than just giving it away for that Aglaia last accountant inventorize. Uh, donate it to the orphans? Yeah, sleep. Alright, <laughs> what do you have? Uh, oh, no panacea, that's for sure. Definitely no panacea. Oh my god. Twyran has gone up in price. I think I paid like 700 or 800. For each one of these before, literally yesterday, when I bought them for Peter Stamaton, and now they're 2500 each? Hmm. Well, I'm not buying that. Alright, gotta find another source for panaceas and schmouters. Well, I think I'm going to end this episode here. It's not exactly the most exciting point to end on, I know. But I'm just going to do a lot of wandering around. And it's going to take a long time, and this recording is already going on pretty long. So here's what I'm going to do. I hope you've enjoyed so far, and next time... Mostly off-camera, except for when anything particularly interesting happens, I'm going to go explore around and visit the other people on the list. So, for example, I need to speak with Aspidy. I haven't spoken with in a while, um, although I did cure her of the plague a long time ago, so uh, again, going with the idea that people won't become reinfected, I'm pretty sure she's going to be fine, but I just want to be absolutely sure. So I'll go speak with her. I guess I'll go talk with Grace, because it's been forever since I've seen her. And then I also need to go to Anna's place. I also need to speak with Katerina. Um, I want to visit Andre Stamaton and Peter Stamaton and see if he's there and how they're doing after yesterday's events. So I'm going to do that mostly off camera, except for when anything interesting happens. And then after that, I'm going to head to the Termitary and hopefully find Barak, see if he's found anything more about the plague in his research in the Termitary. And also speak with Taya, who is supposedly one of the future mistresses. <laughs>